pitching, pitching, and more pitching. Let's talk about it next on Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. Welcome into FBT in 5. As always, make sure to follow and stream us on Spotify. Today is Thursday, September 2nd. I am Frank Stanfield, joined by Scott White. Let's start with some interesting pitchers who might be available on your waiver wire. Jackson Kawar, a prospect for the Royals, made his return to the majors on Wednesday. Six innings, two runs, six strikeouts. He's only 8% rostered. Logan Gilbert had a bit of a rough stretch recently, bounces back big time. Up against the Astros, five shutout with four strikeouts. He had five, uh, 18 swinging strikes in that start. He's 62% rostered. And then Joe Ryan made his Major League debut with the Twins. Five innings, three runs. He had five strikeouts. He is only 13% rostered. Scott, how would you rank those, what I would call, interesting starting pitchers? Kawar, Gilbert, and Joe Ryan. So I would still go Gilbert number one here. He's the most proven in the majors. He has the best prospect pedigree. And ugh, getting 18 swinging strikes against the Astros, a team that entire the combined swinging strike rate is less than nine percent i mean that's that shows you how good logan gilbert stuff is and you know the previous starts three starts were rough i get it he's he struggled recently but you know I, I i don't i don't feel confident any of these three is going to be a league winner for you in september they're all interesting joe ryan would probably be second for me because uh he was obviously the more, but between him and Jackson Kawar, he was the more dominant of the two in the minors. I've wondered if his fastball heavy profile, you know, really good fastball, but not a, averages like 90 miles per hour on it's not an especially hard fastball, and there's not a lot to go with it. Um, it certainly played well enough in his major league debut against the Cubs. He got 14 whiffs, nine were on the fastball, of course, but the fact that he got five on the changeup and slider combined, a combined five. Uh, even though he didn't even throw them that much. I, I mean, that's that's a good sign for Joe Ryan. So he would be number two for me. And then Jackson Kawar would be third. Uh, you know, it was up and down at AAA. Had a good strikeout rate, but the ERA and whip were kind of high. All right, let's fire up the worryometer here on a Thursday. The thuriometer, one to 10. 10 being you are extremely worried. One, not so much. You Darvish at the, the Diamondbacks on Wednesday. And... He gave up six runs over two and two-thirds, has really struggled since the start of July. Next week, it looks like he's in line to face the Angels at home. Worryometer on you, Darvish. I'm going to go five, which is pretty worried, right, for a pitcher of his caliber. However, I don't think it's anywhere close to the point where you could, would consider dropping him, in large part because I, you don't want that powerful of a weapon to fall into enemy hands, right? At, uh, at this stage of the season, you don't want him bouncing back for somebody else. And I think the odds are pretty good that he bounces back. A combined nine walks in those nine starts between July and August, and I guess now September, uh, at least one, one home run in each of them, which is a problem, but the swinging strike rate is actually better during that two month stretch than it was during the stretch of the season when he was going well. So in terms of strikeouts, he's fine. In terms of walks, he's fine. Home run's a little high, yeah, but it, it doesn't seem like anything's hugely wrong with them, right? So I think he can bounce back. Carlos Rodon was up against the Pirates. Five innings, one run, five strikeouts. Overall, it was a pretty good start, except his fastball and slider velocity were both down almost three miles per hour each in this start. Scott, your worryometer level on Carlos Rodon. Yeah, that's uh, that's probably about a four. It's obviously concerning that big of a drop in velocity, but... It was so big that I almost wonder if it was intentional coming back from the IL, you know, halfway intentional. Uh, they're obviously taking it easy on him down the stretch. And we've seen his velocity. It, it was playing lower earlier in the season. So we've seen him succeed with that velocity before and uh, obviously got a good result here. So I'm not ready to panic over Rodon yet. Would you still start him at the Oakland A's next week? Probably. All right, let's wrap up here with a few aces. Garrett Cole at the Angels. Seven innings, one run, 15 strikeouts to zero walks. He had 32 swinging strikes on Wednesday. And then Max Fried went into L.A., faces the Dodgers. Six innings, two runs, nine strikeouts. He has a 1.76 ERA over his last seven starts. Scott, the conversation for Garrett Cole is probably more so for next season. Is he the SP1? Is he the SP2? But Max yeah. Fried, this stretch that he's on right now, 
He might be a league winner. Yeah, well, I mean, really, it goes back to to April. His first three starts of the season were awful. We we soon found out he was dealing with an injury. His velocity was down during that stretch. He went on the IL, came back, and and he's been Max Freed since he came back. Uh, has been somebody you could rely on basically every turn. So the even better this year than his overall numbers would suggest because of that three start stretch in April. And yeah, Cole really turned things back around now since that worrisome stretch in June when there was the crackdown on the sticky substances and his production suffered past eight starts, 234 ERA, 0.98 whip, 14.4 K per nine for Cole. If he's not SP one next year, it's only because Jacob deGrom is, and he shows up to spring training healthy. For more extensive fantasy baseball coverage, listen to the Fantasy Baseball Today podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, your smart speakers, or anywhere else podcasts are found. And thanks for listening to Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. If you enjoyed the pod, please leave a five-star review on Apple. We'll be back again tomorrow morning. Bye-bye. (laughs) 